Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gumansing, happy to be back, topping our newscast for the second election in a row. Alicia Chucky Hansen is fighting for her spot on the general election ballot, and the key players are once again dragged into court. Hansen scored a small victory when a Superior Court judge promptly granted her request for a hearing that's happening on Wednesday at 2 p.m. News 2's April Knight has updates on the election. On Wednesday, Alicia Chucky Hansen is getting her day in court. A Superior Court judge denied her request for a temporary restraining order against election officials because of the immediate court hearing. There, she'll make her case on why she should be eligible to run in November. Named in Hansen's lawsuit are the St. Croix Board, the Joint Election Board, and Election Supervisor Carolyn Fox. Also specified was St. Croix member Adelbert Bryan, who, according to Hansen, would do everything in his power to keep her from running. Fox was served a subpoena, but Joint Election Board Chairman Arturo Watlington said that the Joint Board was not. No, but I don't know if Ms. Fox was served on behalf of the Joint Board. I'm sure she was. But the Joint Board didn't take any action on the issue. I don't know if the Joint Board needs to be represented. I, I, you know, I'm not sure what, how we should handle it. Uh, because the joint board didn't take any action. Hansen is requesting declaratory judgment that her name is indeed Alicia Hansen and not Alden Pickering stated on her birth certificate. The expected Wednesday court decision should allow Fox to send out the final ballot for printing on September 16th and therefore beat federally mandated timelines on when ballots should be available to absentee voters. At their joint election board meeting on Tuesday, the board also discussed how many ballots each voter should have in November. How many separate pieces of paper people are going to be able to vote for because the law says right now that election boards and the education board should be separate ballots, uh, should not be the same ballots as those for senators. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. We will have more on the results of that meeting in a later newscast, as well as the Superior Court's decision on Hansen's case. Count on two to keep you updated. The Virgin Islands Police Department and the Department of Licensing and Consumer Affairs, they're alerting the community about the trend of Western Union scams that the Economic Crime Unit Office has been observing. The scam, they say, is based on receiving a message through cell phone, email, or Facebook, tricking the victims into believing that they were selected to win a vehicle, money, or other rewards. And in return, they have to Western Union monies in order to retrieve their winnings. Here's more. Then when the victims Western Union the monies, the scammers changes their contact information. As of May 2016 to present, the island of St. Croix has had nine different cases and several on St. Thomas. The Virgin Islands Police Department and the Department of Licensing and Consumers are asking the public to please be aware when sending monies through Western Union to people they do not know. Should you have any questions or concerns, please contact the Economic Crime Unit Detectives at 340-773-2266 on St. Croix or in St. Thomas, 340-774-3942. Meanwhile, police have not released any more updates on the hunt for a serial rapist that has victimized women on St. Thomas in the past month. All we know from police is that the suspect is described as a black male frequenting Pillsbury Heights in the state Nazareth. The Daily News has interviewed the latest victim who provided very insightful information as well. Police are urging women to practice safety and to be alert at all times. Again, here are some tips you can use to protect yourself, according to the VIPD. If you have a glass sliding door, place a metal pole or strong stick on the tracks of the door. If you're moving into a new apartment, request your locks to be changed. Always have some means of personal self-defense. Always lock your doors when you're home, especially if you're alone. Be aware of your environment at all times. Always do whatever you need to make yourself safe and secure. No one should ever be a victim of crime. The Crime Prevention Unit also provides house assessments upon request that can assist in ensuring that your home is not easy for target of crime. Hundreds of students at Ala F. Mala Elementary School, they are kicking off the new school year with a little help from Argos and MSI Building Supplies. The multinational cement supplier provided 300 backpacks to the school for the students. Vice President Thomas Brunt, MSI Building Supplies and Argos partnered with the staff at Ala Mala School to coordinate delivery and distribution of the backpacks. 
Dr. Brown's uh, predecessor, Dr. Sh uh, Mrs. Schiller. And uh, so it was great that I was able to connect this. This is not about MSI. This is really all Argos is doing. Argos uh, provided these backpacks, which they're going to give away. So this is really about Argos giving back to the community and wanting to start a new relationship in that regard. Thank you to, to MSI for the initiative. And it's a pleasure to be here today. And I was just happy to be able to give Guys, back, back. Senator Jean Ford, the chairman of the Committee on Education and Workforce Development, partnered with Jennifer Moorhead of Concessions International to assist Joseph Gomez School with much needed cafeteria tables. The senator said he saw the need for the tables last year when he toured the school. The tables were dilapidated and falling apart. Ford reached out to Miss Moorhead, who commissioned My Brother's Workshop to make the tables, which have the school's mascot painted in the center of the table. Principal Avery Evans and the staff, they were elated on the first day of school to be welcomed with the new tables. The Committee on Economic Development, Agriculture and Planning met today at the Senate at the Otley Legislative Hall to discuss major coastal zone management permits. Two were approved, one which allows for the continued use and occupancy of an existing dock and authorizes the installation of a swim platform and another which allows for continued use and occupancy of land north and south of Muhlenfels Point and authorizes the use of existing reconstructed fixed dock and its associated lease submerged lands. Now on Wednesday, the Education and Workforce Development Committee, they will consider a bill to identify high-performing, low-income students for special programs and get an update on the status of school facilities and the VI Board of Education programs as well. As we reported, there was cause for celebration on St. Croix in the past few days. Lime Tree Bay Terminal is breathing new life into Old Havenza's site that's now being used by the new owners as a storage facility. They've been working on getting the site back up in the last several months, but on Monday, they made it official. News is April Knight has more. Monday signaled hope for the St. Croix economy as Lime Tree Bay Terminals officially opened. Governor Kenneth Mapp and Lime Tree CEO Darius Sweet led the celebrations, which began with a party over the weekend. Representatives from the Chinese oil and petroleum giant Sinopec were also on hand. Sinopec discharged its first crude oil for storage at the terminals last week. We're taking the occasion of our biggest customer, Unipec, delivering their first cargo of crude to the facility to celebrate the business relationship and other relationships we're looking to develop with Lime Tree Bay. According to Sweet, Lime Tree wants to become a part of the community. Renewed activity at the old Havenza site is bringing back hopes that jobs will rebound. According to Government House, current employment levels stand at upwards of 500, and they're expecting it to go all the way up to 1,500. And a number of our Virgin Islanders who left when the Hess refinery or the Havenza refinery closed, you know, are beginning to come back home and work. And get jobs. Officials said this is just the first step for St. Croix as the island fights to get back on firm financial footing. One of the first steps that we know will go a long way in bringing back stability, bringing back employment, and just getting this island in particular and the territory in general, you know, back in some economic prosperity. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Well, turning our attention to the campaign trail, it was a jam-packed day on that trail with one notable omission. Hillary Clinton is still taking time off to recover from pneumonia, so she has President Obama out on the road to make her White House pitch. This, while Donald Trump continues to go after Clinton for a controversial comment she made last week. Diane Gallagher has more. The clock is ticking with just eight weeks to go until Election Day. And even though Hillary Clinton is taking the day off to recover from pneumonia. I'm feeling so much better. The campaign has plenty of big names hitting the trail on her behalf. I would trust Hillary Clinton with my son's life. And Donald Trump scares me to death. And taking Donald Trump to task. Trump's got support from like working folks. 
Really? That, like, this is the guy you want to be championing working people? We cannot afford suddenly to treat this like a reality show. And while the Trump campaign is wishing Clinton a speedy recovery, it continues to hammer her for calling some Trump supporters a basket of deplorables. Well, my opponent slanders you as deplorable and irredeemable, I call you hardworking American patriots who love your country. That same comment, though, creating controversy, this time for running mate Mike Pence, who met with Republican leadership in Washington today, and he declined to call former KKK leader David Duke deplorable, but he did say... Donald Trump and I have denounced David Duke repeatedly. Meanwhile, the children of both campaigns are returning to the trail, with Chelsea speaking in the battleground state of North Carolina and Ivanka helping her father roll out his child care affordability policy in Pennsylvania. In Washington, I'm Diane Gallagher. Senator Tim McCain, vice presidential nominee, says Trump has a foundation and he is taking charitable money from the foundation and illegally giving it to the politicians to stop investigating Trump University. Here's more. $25,000, $25,000 from the Trump Foundation to the Attorney General of Florida, who then announced that they weren't going to go forward on a lawsuit against Trump University, even though their office had received complaints. And then Donald Trump did a fundraiser for her. The contribution was illegal. You can't give charitable money to a political campaign. It's illegal. And because they knew it was illegal, when they filed their year-end report, they hid it. They did a cover-up. They said, no, that $25,000 went to some charity group in Kansas. But when the Kansas group was contacted, they said, we never got anything from Donald Trump. And they had to trace it back to find that it was an illegal campaign contribution that was covered up and that was designed to stop an investigation into Trump University. Keeping our eye on the economy, investors are turning to pots. Cannabis is creating a venture capital buzz this week in New York City as companies centered around marijuana pitch their business models to investors. The timing of this event is particularly important with marijuana initiatives on the ballot in nine states in November. Here's a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. Everything down, the Dow 258, Nasdaq down 56, S&P 500 also down 32. Coming up on News 2, we have much more straight ahead. Pick up a free car seat for your young one, learn how to properly secure your child in the seat, and learn about safety in the process. The Child Passenger Safety Clinics, organized annually by the Office of Highway Safety, is coming up. Welcome back. A town hall meeting is underway tonight on St. Croix by the VI Economic Development Commission. It's about the VI EDC program for individuals who are interested in learning about the requirements for participating in the VI Economic Development Commission Tax Incentive Program, how this program is administered, and its benefits to the U.S. Virgin Islands. Now, the next one will be held Thursday, September 15th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Virgin Islands Small Business Development Center in Niski Shopping Center. The VI EDC Tax Incentive Program grants tax exemption benefits to eligible small to large businesses that conduct business in the territory. The VI EDC is one of four entities under the U.S. VI EDA. Department of Human Services Commissioner-designee Dr. Anita Roberts announces the receipt of a grant award for $19 million from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Centers, and that's um, on September 7th. That was on September 7th in support of the territory's Medicaid Management Information System, MMIIS. Now, since October 2012, the department has contracted out these services with Molina Medicaid Solutions. When Medicaid members are rendered services, the MMIS educates health care claims related, related specifically to Medicaid covered services. Claims can now be submitted electronically to the Medicaid program through the VI MMIS, which is consistent with HIPAA requirements. This is real-time claim status and payment information available to the provider and the claim submitter. 
other human services news. The department has reopened the Richmond Senior Center on St. Croix. Preparations have been made by staff in the Division of Senior Citizen Affairs as well as the Richmond Senior Center. The demolition of the Ralph D. Chabert Housing Community forced human services to temporarily relocate the Richmond Senior Center to an area within the Herbert Grigg home in Kingsville. Seniors who were displaced from the demolition continued to be bused to the site as an alternate location. Virgin Islands Department of Education Division of Special Nutrition Programs is scheduled to distribute USDA food commodities for St. Thomas and St. John families under the emergency food assistance programs. Now we know that this took place on St. Croix already. Now commodities are limited to one package per eligible household. The distribution sites and times are as follows right there. St. John uh, at the Julius E. Sproul School Cafeteria Saturday September 17th 7 a.m. and then on St. Thomas at the Lockhart Elementary Cafeteria that's on Saturday September 24th at 7 a.m. continues until supplies are depleted. The Emergency Food Assistance Program, uh, they use income, not age, to determine program eligibility. This distribution is for all persons meeting the eligibility guidelines. The Virgin Islands Office of Highway Safety will be hosting free car and booster seat clinics in celebration of Child Passenger Safety Week. Here are the dates on St. John. It'll be on Thursday, September 15th at the Bureau of Motor Vehicles in Cruise Bay from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Then on St. Thomas, Friday, September 16th, Anna's Retreat Community Center, which is next to the basketball court in Anna's Retreat, St. Thomas, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. St. Croix, Friday, September 23rd at the former St. Dunstan School before Easterly Building, Christiansted, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Attendees are asked to bring the child, the child's birth certificate, car registration, and insurance and driver's license. Seats are available while supplies last. Social media has been flooded with many condolence messages, with dozens more sharing a post from 25-year-old Sharita Maxine Carty, who was pronounced dead by medical staff last Thursday. According to VIPD, around 5 p.m., officers responded to reports of a woman drowning at Megan's Bay Beach on St. Thomas. On her Facebook page, she made reference to a dream she had. Now, family and friends have set up a GoFundMe account. Pamela Jurgen, who is Sharita's mother, she shares her grief and talks about her daughter's personality. Bystanders told police during that event that the woman was snorkeling and was found out in the water floating face down. Be sure to log on to the GoFundMe account for Sharita Maxine Cardi's home going. The director of the Virgin Islands Fire Service, Clifford Joseph, says that the arson investigation and prevention unit in the St. Thomas St. John District, they will not be conducting fire safety inspections this week as the unit's personnel will be participating in training. The office will remain open, however, for those wishing to submit applications for inspection and to pay fees. Inspections will resume on Monday, September 19th. The management and staff of the fire service apologize for any inconvenience this may have caused. Well, veterans' attention. Are you a Purple Heart recipient in the military? Veterans Affairs is looking for you. Purple Heart recipients will be recognized this year. During the annual Veterans Day activities coming up, you are asked to make contact with the office in either district. If you want to march in the parade, you're welcome to do so. Accommodations will be made for those who are physically unable to do so. Call the Veterans Office in your district, St. Thomas, St. John, or St. Croix. And here's some buzzworthy news to take us out. The Virgin Isles Department of Agriculture, they're inviting the public to the 5th annual Virgin Fresh Bee Bazaar to be held from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Saturday, September 24th at the Sunshine Mall parking lot. Local bee products including honey, soaps, pollen, candies, honey wines, beeswax and more will be available for the public to purchase. The annual activity is aimed at heightening consumer awareness of the importance and benefits of bees and to promote the agriculture beekeeping industry in the territory. They say it is estimated that about one-third of the food we eat is dependent on bee pollination. Honeybees add more than $15 billion in value to agricultural crops each year in the U.S. Be sure to stick around. News to AccuWeather the forecast is coming up next.
over the past 24 hours, we've been clearing out a little bit from what we've seen over the last few days, but we're still having those passing showers and thunderstorms as well. But as you take a look, a lot of the moisture is being drawn out of our area from Tropical Storm Ian, so it's actually protecting us from the precipitation and it's moving it into the central Atlantic. Some passing trade wind showers as we draw into a closer view of it. You can see the cloud covers here. Um, that's causing that precipitation as well. Check out the moisture map that you can see. You can see all the moisture being sucked into Ian. That's a pretty cool image if you ask me. Now moving into tonight, your low is going to be at 79 degrees, partly cloudy skies. Those showers will begin to dissipate throughout the evening, but come tomorrow, they'll return in St. John, 90 degrees. Moving into St. Thomas, 90 degrees at well, partly sunny. We'll have times of sun and times of cloud and times of rain. St. Croix, 90 degrees. It's the same story there. Your marine forecast for the Atlantic side, three to five feet for your waves out of the east, winds five to 10 knots. And as we move on to the Caribbean side, we're gonna see the same thing. Three to five feet for your waves and winds out of the east five to 10 knots. Take a look at your extended forecast. On Wednesday, those showers are going to continue throughout the week, just a normal passing trade wind shower. We'll start to see those actually increase throughout the weekend. Come Saturday, oh, we're gonna see some shower in spots, but especially on Sunday, those showers are going to increase as a tropical wave moves through the area. It's just going to increase the number. It's not going to be severe. Back to you, Sandy. Thanks for that. It is time for our new Sioux weather picture there by Laquana Tavernier, fourth grader of the E. Benjamin Oliver Elementary School. Some big raindrops there by Laquana. Now moisture is moving out of our area, so we may or may not be needing that umbrella Laquana, but keep it handy just for the sunshine. <laughs> Thanks for that. Send us your new Sioux weather picture too. News 2, Innovative Business Center, 4611, 22 Park Street, 300, St. Thomas VI, 00802. That is all for this edition of News 2. We'd like to thank you for joining us for all the latest. I'm Sandra Gomancing. We'll see you next time. News 2, we'd like to thank you for joining us for the latest in news.